Hello, hi everyone. Good morning to you all. I hope that you all can hear me properly. Thank you very much. It's an honor and pleasure to be one of the keynote speakers for the International Conference on Teacher 2023, organized by the Teaching and Education Research Association. My presentation is basically on looking at enhancing the quality of teaching learning through instructional supervision and professional development of teachers. Before starting, I would like to give you a brief introduction about my main role as the former head of the department and also a senior lecturer at the Faculty of Education, University of Colombo, Sri Lanka. As a department, as well as a faculty, we of course focus on teacher training, international collaboration, department and faculty development, as well as supporting our student teachers in their training and higher educational learning journey. As part of my institutional requirement, the ideas and views expressed here are entirely based on my personal and professional experiences as a professional teacher educator. The views expressed here do not therefore represent any institution, organization, unless otherwise stated or referenced. First of all, it is important to understand what is instructional supervision. Instructional supervision can be identified as a professional ongoing and collaborative process for improving instruction. It consists of guidance, assistance, idea sharing, facilitation, or creation to assist teachers in improving the learning situation and quality of learning in school. Under this program, a supervisor or instructional leader who possesses supervisory knowledge and skills and works collaboratively in a school environment that fosters the development of a professional learning community extends a helping hand to a professional colleagues. Therefore, it is clear that the instructional supervision, of course, supports teachers to develop their professional development. We'll discuss the main goals of instructional supervision. Instructional supervision is an important tool for schools as it helps them in ensuring that their vision and mission is achieved by supervising, training, and also empowering teachers so that they can create valuable experiences for their students. When considering the main goals of instructional supervision, we can recognize that instructional supervision modify educational plan. It helps to diagnose and solve teaching problems. It helps to modify teaching methodology on the job training as well as it encourages using educational aids during teaching. And also it helps to conduct effective evaluation. Not only that, but also it helps to modify learning condition for students. And also instructional supervision evaluate teachers for promotions or appointments and also it helps teachers maintain positive attitudes. In fact, supervision is a service activity which has been designed in order to help improve teaching methodology of teachers as well as professional development. Instructional supervision, when undertaken by the principals, head teachers, focuses primarily on helping teachers reflect on 
their actions and promote in school improvement through professional development. On the other hand, general instructional supervision is school based and is undertaken by initial supervisory teams such as inspectors, teachers, principals and administrators in the schools to provide support, supervision and continuity assessment for the professional development of teachers and the improvement of their teaching process. Also, instructional supervision improves the professional knowledge of teachers and promotes the effectiveness of teaching strategies they implement. Being the main stakeholders in the implementation of the curriculum, teachers should be involved in the strategic planning of the instructional supervision program. If teachers view supervision as something done to them and for them but not with them, its potential to improve school cannot be fully realized. Therefore, it is very important to make aware of the main goals of the instructional supervision. Then I hope it is better to know the steps that supervisors should follow in the process of instructional supervision. According to the Kogan, we all know that there are eight phases of the clinical supervision. So the first one needs to establish in the teacher supervisor relationship. So before starting observing of lessons, it is very important to establish the teacher supervisor relationship. Then we need to plan with the teacher. The lessons need to be planned with the teacher, with the trainee, with the supervisee. Third phase is planning the strategy of observation. Therefore, we need to decide whether we are going to record the lesson or not. Whether teachers like if supervisors record their lessons. So therefore, we need to plan the observation strategy. Fourth phase is the observing instruction. Now you see we have to follow four steps to observe uh, instruction. Fifth one, analyze the teaching learning process. Once we observe a session, lesson, then we have to analyze the teaching learning process. And there we need to find out what are the strengths as well as the areas that need further development? Sixth phase is the planning the strategy of the post observation conference. Seventh phase is the post observation conference. So at this post observation conference, we should give opportunities for the teachers to share their ideas, views, as well as suggestions, if we really want to uh, provide facilities for teachers to acquire professional development. And finally, according to Kogan, we need to renew the planning. If supervisors can follow all these eight paces, I hope that we can provide a better quality service for our trainee teachers to uh, acquire professional development. Then we'll move on to what researchers around the world say about instructional supervision. There is a distinct shift of instructional supervision from an autocratic approach to a more democratic approach. The environment has become favorable to fostering a continuation of 
inspectional as well as judgmental supervisory practices. Teachers are still afraid of instructional supervision. A significant number of supervisors are not prepared for instructional supervision and do not observe the entire lesson and hence they fail to provide the proper feedback for teachers. Instructional supervision therefore should be collaborative, non-judgmental and supportive of teachers developing reflective practices to improve instruction. There is a need for regular classroom observation. There is a need to undertake training programs intended to enhance the practices of principals and teachers on effective instructional supervision. There is a need for collaborative and trust-based type of supervision. There should be a regularity, continuity and quality in supervision with the provision of adequate funding and capacity building. And also more research on instructional supervision is needed as there is still a gap on instructional supervision. Therefore, I hope all these research findings will facilitate for all of us to rethink, reorganize and re-implement our supervisory programs so that our trainee teachers can develop their professional development. Finally, I would like to draw your attention to the current issues and concerns in instructional supervision. So current issues and concerns show that not having sufficient time for the instructional supervision process, that means supervisors do not spend sufficient time on observing lessons. Lack of pedagogical knowledge concerning instructional supervision. Not allocating supervision responsibilities in writing. So supervisors are responsible to give a written feedback so that supervisee can go through it and minimize their weaknesses. Absence of teachers on the date of supervision. Lack of resources, inadequate funding, shortage of professional supervisors, political instability and political instability, poor capacity development of supervisors, as well as inadequate transportation facilities and insecurity problems. Therefore, we as professionals need to consider about all these current issues and concerns in instructional supervision. And it is our responsibility and accountability to provide a better service through instructional supervision so that teachers around the world can enhance professional development so that they can provide a better service to these students at the end. In summary, it is clear that this is the high time for all of us to work together, engaging in collaborative research and disseminating our research findings so that we all can improve professional development and provide a better service for the wider community around the world. So with that, I really want to thank the organizing committee of the Teaching and Education Research Association for giving this opportunity to be a keynote speaker of the International Conference Teacher 2023. Thank you very much.